Here we are at the end of the series of videos created to look broadly at the idea of academic integrity. This video in particular is going to be an introduction to citations. In previous videos, we talked about citations, references, as well as in-text citations, and looked at their importance in making sure that we adhere to ad academic integrity. Remember, there are many different citation styles that you can use, and make sure to verify with your professor which style they want you to use on your assignments. Also, since there are so many different citation styles available, it'll be almost impossible to cover them all in one video, so instead I'm going to be taking a pretty broad view of citations. Um, I'll include some links to several resources that can help you with formatting citations as well towards the end of the video. So again, we're going to be looking at our learning outcomes. I'm going to reiterate why we have to cite. This is really important. We're going to identify some key components of citations. And finally, I want, you to, I want to show you some of the tools that can help you with creating your citations. So remember, Carleton's academic integrity policy is a big document, and there are many ways that you can be in violation of it. But here are a few that relate to citations specifically. Remember, passing off someone's work as one's own, and not properly giving credit to other researchers or writers. And remember, this can happen whether intentionally or not. Simply unintentionally forgetting to cite information still puts you in violation of academic integrity. So remember, when in doubt, cite. And this is very, very important. Let's see. So again, we cite to attribute ideas and concepts to their sources, and this is done through in-text references, quotations, and footnotes, or at the end of texts in something similar to like a bi bibliography or a reference list. But there's also a few other reasons that we do cite. And they are to show your reader that you've done proper research by listing resor the sources you use to get your information. To be a responsible scholar by giving credit to other researchers and acknowledging their ideas. Because I keep coming back to this, remember, you're now part of the scholarly community and this is best practice. You also do it to avoid pl plagiarism by quoting words and ideas used by other authors. But it also allows your reader to track down the sources you used by citing them accurately in your paper by way of things like footnotes, bibliography, or a reference list. Citations are usually comprised of two components, two parts. So the in-text citation and the reference list, which can go by different names depending on which citation style you're actually using. For example, it might be known as a bibliography or a works cited page. Your in-text citations are a brief form of the reference that you include in the body of your work. It gives enough information to uniquely identify the source in your reference list, and they usually consist of things like a family name of the author or authors, and the year of publication. Similarly, your reference list bibliography or works cited page is a list of the publication information for the sources that you've cited in your paper, and, as intended, and is intended to give your readers all the information they need to actually find those sources. Remember, only list sources that you cite in your text. Do not cite sources that you read but don't cite. Uh, also, organize your references alphabetically by author's last name, and include a reference list in almost any paper that you write uh, when you cite outside material. And we're going to look at some examples here. So these are a couple of examples of in-text citations. Uh, the first one is parenthetical citations, and these are also known as information prominent citations. You don't have to remember that, but it's usually used to emphasize the information being cited, and typically this will contain an author's last name, year of publication, and, it, and if applicable, a page number. You can see here, this is a parenthetical citation. But there's also the narrative citation, and this is a type of citation where the author's name is used within the text of a sentence. This type of citation um, can introduce some variety into your writing, and it's also going to sound a little bit more natural if you're doing something like an oral presentation. And that citation at the end, um, and that's going to sound a little bit more natural than putting it at the end of your cite at the end of your sentence like this. However, it's important to know that this does require a little bit more skill to use uh, clearly. So it's just a little bit more challenging, but certainly an option for you. Remember, these are just a few examples, and it's always recommended to go directly to the official guide of the citation style you're using to formulate your in-text citations. Now, here are a few examples of reference lists. They also are called sometimes works cited and bibliographies, depending on which format you're using. Remember, a reference list is a list of the publication information for the sources that you've cited in your paper, and is intended to give your uh, readers all of the information that they need to find those sources. And again, I'm just going to reiterate this. Only list sources that you cite in your text. Don't include sources you read but do not cite. 
Remember to organize them uh, alphabetically by author's last name. And also remember to include a reference list in every paper in which you cite outside material. Now, since there are a lot of different citation styles, I just wanted to show you examples of a reference list, a works cited page, a bibliography, a bibliography uh, page as well in some of the different styles. You can see we have an APA format, an MLA format, and a Chicago format. While formatting does change between them, they do contain a lot of the same information. And at the end of the day, remember there are many different citation styles, and it's important to note that they are the official style guides, and they are the most authoritative source on the various styles. And again, some of the more popular ones are shown here, uh, but not all of them are available electronically, and you will be required to use the print version, which in most cases we do have them at the library. But that doesn't mean there aren't any other tools that can be helpful when trying to create your citations. If we look at a couple of them here, the first one here is the Online Writing Lab at Purdue University, conveniently called OWL Purdue, and it's an excellent resource that covers most of the major citation styles. It also tends to cover many different types of resources, including things like academic journals, uh, books, but also things like lecture slides, interviews, and websites. The library's website, you know, you can see it here on the right-hand side of the screenshot, also has a citation guide containing uh, additional resources that can be helpful when writing your citations. You can see in this screenshot it is listed, this is just taken from a desktop computer, it's just listed under research support and there's citation guides there. Unfortunately, the library is not able to verify whether citations are done correctly or not. So um, oftentimes we'll have students ask if their citation is done correctly. Unfortunately, we can't verify those citations here at the library for you. So at the end, so we've reached the end of the module, and I just want you to remember academic integrity is a very complex concept, and in the module we just started exploring how you can ensure that you can adhere to it. So there are a couple of things that I want you to take away from these videos, and the first is that you are now part of the scholarly community. When I was a university, when I first started university, it was hard for me to place myself within that community, and it wasn't until later in my academic career that I started to see the various roles that we all played within that community. But I want you to know that everyone fits into this community, and that, and that comes from first-year students um, all the way up to graduate students or professors, and the role can sometimes change as you move along. But you are indeed part of it, and as such, it's important to respect the values that we mentioned uh, from the academic integrity policy, which include honesty, trust, respect, fairness, and responsibility. Secondly, I want you to remember that academic integrity is a complex idea and a very complex um, thing to think about. And as you move through your academic career, some of these ideas that we discuss will become easier and more routine. These are not easy skills to master, um, but it's okay to be confused and the library is here to help you throughout your academic career. While we might not be able to verify things like your paraphrasing or citations, we can certainly point you in the right direction to resources that can help you. And with that, I always like to end with this quote. I think this is really a fabulous um, uh, quote here, and it's taken from one of the wisest wizards. And it says, help will always be given to, at Hogwarts to those who ask for it. And that's from Albus Dumbledore uh, in 2007 from Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Um, but I think it really does hold true at the library as well. And we can just flip some of those words out and we can say, help will always be given at the library for those who ask for it. So I just want you to remember that and take that away from this module. So thank you for working through this with me, and I hope it was helpful for you.